Hello, everybody. Welcome to Real Guitar Success Live. I'm Thomas Michaud, for those of you who don't me, know me. And this is a monthly session that I do to answer all your guitar-related questions. Thank you for being here. If you're watching this as a recording, because I will record this and you can look back on it, please uh, welcome. And please, if you do have some questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below on YouTube. I will. I, I look at them every few days and I will get back to you. And for those of you who are live, feel free to, I have pre-submitted questions, but feel free to add your questions and I will answer them on the show today. It really helps me, by the way, if you put the word in big letters, question first. I'm just glancing at the, I, my eyesight's not that good. And I glance at the comments and glance back at you guys. And I really can only catch the ones that I see a, something in front that says question. There's a lot of comments, so I don't have time to filter. I appreciate it. Uh, for those of you who are new here, uh, and I know there's a lot of veterans, and welcome, Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you. A lot of really nice well wishes. I appreciate that. Happy New Year. Uh, for those of you who are new, I'll tell you just a little bit how this is going to go. Uh, I, I have a short, very short presentation that I wanted to show you guys. And then I'm going to go start answering all your questions. I'll start with the ones that were pre-submitted. And you can always pre-submit questions ahead of time. I like that because sometimes if I'm not sure the answer, I can do a little research and, and make sure I'm giving you the right information. But I'll do my best either way. And then uh, you're also welcome to add questions here live. I'll answer those after I answer the pre-submitted. And sometimes it's nice to, you know, to add a clarifying question if I didn't quite get it right. So I'll do my best. Then I'm going to do a drawing for a $50 Amazon gift card. This is for students of my Real Guitar Success membership that have completed the 20 practice sessions for the month. And just to be clear, all I do is ask they spend just 10 minutes on it. They don't have to perfect it and then check it off and move on. There's one per day per weekday. So we've got a bunch of them. I've got them in my hat here. And they've done a great job. Of course, the real winning is just going through the lessons. You're a better guitar player. It's a variety of different aspects of playing guitar every month. So with that, let's start with my short presentation. I'm going to go to my guitar because I'm afraid <laughs> I'll forget. And then you'll be looking at my face and I'm playing something on the guitar. So let me do this now. <clears throat> you guys see my guitar okay? Fortunately, I do have two cameras so I can focus in a little bit here. Uh, I wish it was brighter, but maybe if I angle up a little bit. Let's see. Everybody see it okay? Good. I want to show you a finger picking pattern that I've been asked about a few times. And uh, I just thought it's really an easy pattern. I really encourage anyone who wants to do finger picking to learn this pattern. And it's simpler than like the Travis picking pattern, which I love, and but takes a little more to get the hang up. I call it the outside inside pattern. But for years, and I still refer to it as the boxer pattern. The reason is, is because it, it, that's the most famous song I know where they use this finger picking pattern. Simon Garfunkel basically built the the boxer around this finger picking pattern. And uh, that stuck in my mind. If you're not familiar with that song, don't worry about it. It's a great pattern for a lot of uh, folk style, pop, pop rock kind of stuff. And I'm going to actually, I'll show you a little progression to practice it that I actually got from the boxer, a couple of few chords. It makes it more fun to practice. And as a side note, if you ever want to learn the boxer by Simon Garfunkel, this is like 80% of the song. You learn this, it's a breeze to, to get the rest of the chords. So I'm going to make a C chord because I want something that sounds good. And then my right hand, now we're going to take a look. I'm going to call this by the numbers of the strings. This is common in finger picking patterns. It's an easy thing to write down on, you know, even on a typewriter or a computer nowadays. We're going to call each of these strings by their number. The lowest string is six and the highest string is one. And that's common, by the way. And I, I know for some people, if you're new to guitar, that sounds like this should be first, closest to you or up. But we're talking musically pitch. So that means the highest string is the highest pitch wise. And that's why it's number one. Even though it's the lowest physically, it's the highest pitch. So this is the highest string and this is the lowest string. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. So the finger picking pattern now is called five, two, four, three. So let me go back over it. I'm going to put my thumb on the fifth string, 
That's the open A string. Well, it's not open. I have a C chord. And, and then my second finger I'm using for the second string. This is not the absolute only way to do this, by the way. It's the way I do it. I'm used to, from classical guitar, basically using these three fingers, one per string. But I've seen a lot of people just use one finger and just go back and forth. So don't, if you do that and it works for you, it's not wrong. I'm going to do thumb on the fifth string, second finger on my right hand on the second string. Now, down on the fifth string, up with the finger, second finger on the second string into my palm. Try not to yank your hand out. That universally causes trouble. And then onto the fourth string with the thumb. And then I use my first finger for the third string. Whoop, that wasn't right. There. So it should be fifth, two, four, three. And that's the number. I encourage you, if you have your guitar, I'll try it with me. And I'll speed it up so you can hear more what the pattern sounds like. Five, two, four, three. Again, five, two, four, three. One more. Five, two, four, and three. Now I'm going to speed it up. Don't worry about this. It's just so you can hear what the pattern is going to eventually sound like. And I encourage you, start slow and then pick it up little by little. Oops. <laughs> Sounds better fast, doesn't it? Or at least at this speed, I wouldn't call this fast. Now, the chord progression, the practice. Here's what I like to use. A C chord, an A minor chord, same in the right hand here. Then I go to the G chord. This is where there's a change. The thumb moves over to the sixth string, but I'm still going to do from there on six two, four, three. So the other strings are the same. It's the thumb is changing the bass note. Like that. You notice I didn't make a full G in my left hand. There's no need. I'm not playing the other string. So why go through all this? Sometimes I do it out of habit just because I'm used to playing a G chord, but you don't need to. You can just press that bass note and get the pattern. And then finally, this is a nice chord. I like this progression. I play an F chord, but I'm not playing a bar F. I'm playing all the F chord without a bar, and I put my first finger on the second string, set, first fret. This is a good form of F to know. It really sounds good going to the C. Listen, it's kind of resolution, kind of up in the air and then resolves. So the pattern goes, that's the F, and then the C. Doesn't that sound good? So you can see from the C chord, all I did was move my second finger over one string to the third string, and the pinky comes down on that fourth string, third fret. That's the F now. So I'm using the fifth string for the bass note. It's not an F note. It's a C note. And that's okay. In music technical terms, we'd call that an inversion. You don't always have to have the root note of the name of the chord in the bass. In this case, it's the fifth of the chord. Don't worry about that. I just threw it out there for those of you who are interested in music theory. Give you something to think about. And then C. I'd rather you get it sound-wise and then think about it later, by the way. If, if, <laughs> if Don't stop and try to figure it out before you play it. Now, here's the pattern. One, we're going to do two Cs, two A minors, and then double everything else. So two Gs, two Fs, and two Cs. Here's what it sounds like. I'll go slow. And feel free to play along. It even if you mess up, somehow the it seems to me when you're active working with it, it, it sticks better. So I encourage you to fumble through it, even if it's hard. Here we go. Two of the C's. Now I'm going to A minor two. Now the G. Twice on the G, basically four patterns. Now the F. Can you already hear that's got to go somewhere to the C chord? And that was four. Now the C. I'll do a little bit faster now. Whoops. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, I hope you enjoy that. If some of you will take that as a something to practice, and it, of course, it makes sense to just practice the pattern first, one chord, and then add the rest of the chords. Maybe practice each of the chords separately and then put them together. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. Okay, let's go to the questions. And it looks like we've got quite a few, both pre-submitted and new questions. Uh, let me start from the top here. What type of strum would you use with old style 12 bar blues like Robert Johnson's Crossroads? Um, I don't know that song uh, off the top of my head, but I know old style blues and basically, uh, and Robert Johnson's playing acoustic guitar. Uh, I, I would play something, uh, uh, I would start with a basic blues pad, uh, shuffle rhythm in my right hand. It would be something like, and you don't have to do this if you're not used to it. So that's a shuffle. Here's a straight strum. One and two, and the shuffle is da, 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 da. Some people count it one, two, three, one, two, three. I, I don't actually like that. I prefer to feel it. And if you listen to blues, it's easier to just get the feel, I think, than to try to count it out. But whatever works for you. That's without that muting thing. Which works, really. If you're just learning a song, I'd start there. And if you want to add to your strums, try this. You, down, down. I'm muting with my right hand. That's a palm mute. I'm basically strumming and muting with my palm at the same time. So it chokes the strings out. It's a good technique to know, but it's not where you start. So if it's a standard 12 bar blues, this is gonna work fine. When I play a bar chord, which I just did, I kind of help that muting with my left hand. I push up a little bit, but you see, I can't do that with the open chords. And that's why I focus on the palm mute. And if I do a bar chord, I can just let it help out a little bit. Okay, so let's go on. The next question is about tabs. This is interesting. I've never had this question and I'm surprised because I think it's a great question. It's something that I remember wondering about. And this is Rod. He's saying, you know, I got a lot of tabs. I probably collect them on the internet. He didn't say that, but I'm sure that's where he did. And I don't get it. There's a lack of direction. It doesn't really tell me like the parts of the song, when it goes from the verse or the chorus and all those kinds of things. Bridge, he mentions, and so it's confusing. How do you, how does one recognize the correct composition uh, for the entire song? And I assume he means using just tab. So you're right, Rod, it is confusing. Here's a couple of things to start with. First of all, tab does not give you all the information on several levels, but all tab is not created equal. Most tab on the internet, all this free tab stuff, it's just created by people of varying degrees of levels of guitar playing, listening to a song, writing it out, and then sharing with others. Um, it's not professional transcriptionists. That's what we call somebody who writes music. You know, they, they listen to music and write it out on paper, either tab or notation. It's not usually professional transcription. It's, I'm sure at least 90% is not, probably more. Everything I found is, is just somebody submitting their version. And it says that. And a lot of the websites says this is, it's not us doing this. It's, you know, if there's any errors, don't blame us. So you're going to get all varieties. First of all, you're going to get all varieties of accuracy. Some are really bad. Some are really good. What I do when I look at tab, if I'm using tab to learn a song, I get three or four versions and compare them. And then I listen to the song and see which one seems the most accurate. And then I'll go ahead and sometimes manipulate it myself because I can hear they, you know, most of them are not professional musicians. They don't hear all the little uh, chord changes or the subtleties. Sometimes I'm impressed. They really did a great job. And sometimes I'm hearing something. I can't figure it out. I find another tab and say, oh, that he's got it. That guy's figured that chord change out. 
it's a, not a normal chord. It's got a different bass note or something. So that's one area of confusion. The second area of confusion is tab was never meant to give you all the information. It's more like a, a helping thing, kind of like, let me see, just to give you a, a rough map when somebody draws you, draws you rough directions on how to get somewhere. It's not meant to be, you know, you, you look at every little arrow on the page and figure out if it's going a little this way or a little this way. They're, they're complimenting it with telling you, and this is to remind you what they said, you know, and hopefully between the two and seeing the terrain, you'll actually get to where you want to go. That's how tab is. It's not meant to be the end all of how the song goes. When I use tab, I, you really, okay. When anyone uses tab, you got to know the song. It doesn't tell you how fast or slow, what kind of rhythm. Uh, and even if it did, it's open to interpretation, but most doesn't. It's, it doesn't have rhythmic information. It doesn't tell you how long to hold the chords, how, how it doesn't give you the, the actual notes to show you the little subtleties that they're doing. It's meant to complement your listening and learning the song by ear and to give you some help. And then I find it great help a lot of times. It really kind of clarifies things, but it only comes second to using my ear and listening to what I'm trying to play. So you need to know the song, basically. You need to listen to the song and then look at the tab, maybe get a couple versions. Don't count on one being absolutely correct. Take into account where it's coming from. Um, after a while, you might even see some tab coming from one website that's more accurate than another. But they're almost all submitted by individuals, so you're going to have variety even within one website. Okay. <laughs> For years, I, I would look at tab and try to figure out a song and I realized after a while, it's not going to tell me how to play a song. It's going to help me after listening to a song and trying to play it by ear. Hope that helps, Rod. If nothing else, I hope you don't feel like you're the only one that's confused trying to read tab and get the whole song. You need to listen to it. Another thing you can do, by the way, is sometimes you can find the actual sheet music to the song. Um, mostly not free. If it's sheet music, uh, it means they have to pay copyright usually. This is not somebody in their basement just quickly jotting down a song. They have to pay royalties. That's the word. And I'll do it. You know, if I really want to learn a song and I, I think I need the help, I'll just pay the five bucks and get the sheet music or, you know, depending on the song. Five bucks is usually the max now, but sometimes three or four. And then the, the sheet music has the exact structure of the song. Usually they actually, the professional actually went there and really mapped out the song correctly. And then I'll add some of those notations to whatever tab I'm working with. So I usually end up going for my own uh, ver my own written notes because I, I don't trust any one thing. A lot of times written notation, you know, they they have it in a key that's not helpful or something because they're, they're basically making it for piano players and it's a guitar song and the keys aren't necessarily, e piano keys are not necessarily easy on the guitar. So um, I would encourage you to keep trying. You'll see it a little over time, you figure out some stuff, keep asking questions, it gets clearer and clearer. Okay, I'm really strumming. This is John, and he says, I'm really frustrated with strumming. Welcome to the world of playing guitar, John. <laughs> this was one of my big things when I first started playing guitar, and I get this from students all the time. It looks like, when you think about it, the simple down-up strum is, is not complicated, but to get the subtlety so it sounds good is takes time and experience. He says he got the chords, okay, um, and that's favorite part of guitar. But it doesn't sound good. He says, I, I, I've seen the videos on rhythm and I still don't get anything that sounds right. And it's occurred to me that um, I should forget strumming patterns and listen to the beat of the music. You probably have dealt with this before a hundred times in your students. What do you think I should do to get a handle on this? Well, first of all, John, there's no one quick fix. It's sort of like riding a bike. Nobody's going to tell you when to put your foot up and down and that's going to make it so you can ride a bike without training wheels, right? There's this whole, you got to get your, your groove, basically. You're going to have to get the subtleties. And they're going to probably not come little by little by little. It's probably going to be like nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, little, little, nothing. Oh, I got it. That's what happened to me. I remember sitting down to the campfire one time after about a year of playing guitar. Just I almost assumed I'll never be able to strum like I see people strumming, you know, smoothly and easily without having to think about every movement. And I remember sitting, playing campfire, and we're having a good time. I'm there. My friends are asking me to play some songs, and they want to sing along. And I remember looking down, going, "Whoa, my hand is just doing it, and it sounds good." I 
that happened after you know trying for a year and i mean i was pretty um i came at it a lot so and people get it at different levels of course i don't think i'm naturally exceptionally physically coordinated and some people are better at that and some worse i'm sure so keep going step by step that's the best thing and keep uh Yes, try not to think too hard about the strumming. I think that's what you were trying to say here. Maybe I should listen to the, to the music. To the, you said listen to the beat. But I would just listen to the feel of the music and try to imitate that with your hand without thinking about go up, down, harder, softer, with all that kind of stuff. It's okay to once in a while, you know, go ahead and back up and try to correct things and then come back at it and let it go. As long as you try to think. I remember this when I was learning the salsa dance. As long as I was trying to think where to put my foot, no woman wanted to dance with me <laughs> because it felt like I was thinking about where to put my foot. Once I could just kind of let it go and it was, it became fun for me, fun for my partner. And it just seemed to come much more easily. There's not one exact way to get there. Um, and I'm not sure that anything I could say will get you there other than experience, you know, keep trying to let go, come back at it, try to correct something and come back at it. Good luck with that. I, I empathize with you, really. Uh, just keep going. And you're right. There are a lot more tips. None of those tips will be the end all, probably. It might even feel like it, but believe me, everything before that actually will come together at some point. Uh, Paul asks, I want a professional guitar setup. Uh, good idea, by the way. Uh, should the strings be the same height from the first fret all the way up to the end? Uh, first of all, the short answer is absolutely not. Uh, if they were completely even, when you press down here, it would hit the string here and you frets, your sound would deaden out. It, it couldn't work. I'm just talking physics. Um, what a professional will do, and by the way, your job is to tell a professional what style of music you're playing, maybe how, what level you're at, that kind of thing. Uh, when I go to the guitar repair shop, I tell Adam, hey, I'm playing, well, he knows now, but I've told him in the beginning, I, I play this style and here's what I'm doing. Here's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm, um, I'm not hitting really hard, but I, I want something that's fairly clear. I need these uh, this gauge of strings. And I, I got there by experimenting with different thicknesses of strings. And then he puts them on the guitar and knows kind of what to do adjustments. I don't tell him to make it this high here and this high here. That's his job. I don't, I don't go there. I know physically I can't. That couldn't work. But I don't even think about that. You want to tell the repairman basically where you're at, level, and let him do his thing. And and that means you need to find a repairman that knows what he's doing. <laughs> but it's it's really worth it. It makes guitar playing more fun, easier to play. It responds better. I'd highly recommend if you've had the guitar, even brand new guitarists need some kind of setup. And get, at least get an opinion. You could say, hey, does, could this benefit from you know me spending a little money and getting the action adjusted? By the way, they will adjust it depending on the string. So you don't want to put one thickness string on, have it adjusted, and then go and put a different thickness on yourself and expect it to stay the same. Um, if you change thickness on string, it's probably going to need another adjustment. And the adjustment is a combination, by the way, of the neck of the guitar, the angle it using a thrust rod, the height of this nut here, the bridge, uh, and more in depth would be filing down the frets, making them smooth. And if any frets are kind of popping up, that adds a little extra expense. I'll often start with a simple setup, nut, bridge, angle of the neck, and see if that gets where I want to go. And if not, I'll, I'll pay the extra money and get the, the frets um, filed down or smooth it out. I want my guitars to play as easy as they can. Good question, Paul. My, uh, and here's Bauer, my issue is my second finger. Well, it's better than me. My issue is all my fingers. <laughs> and he says, particularly on the C chord, okay, it mutes, buzzes, because it's not positioned close to the fret. Um, I probably didn't copy the whole question. Uh, so I'm not sure how to answer that. I will say this, Bauer, that's pretty much every student tells me at some point that they can't get their fingers in the right place and the strings are buzzing. And most of it is just coming at it a little at a time and making small adjustments and feeling, you know, what makes it right. 
the principles are, and I talk about this in my Real Guitar Success, and Bauer, I know you're there. So the principles are you want to get your fingers as close to the fret as possible because the farther back they are, the harder you have to press to get it to sound right. And sometimes, no matter how hard you press, it won't sound right. And you have to practice to do that. I mean, to the point where uh, do this just five minutes a day and see how close you can get to the fret. Take your hand off and put them back on. Don't even strum them. Just five minutes a day. By the way, one of the biggest things I remember is I underestimated how often you have to do something repeatedly when I first started learning. And it seems that's the kind of thing most students struggle with. They think I did it 10 times, it should work now. No, it doesn't work that way. You probably have to do it hundreds of times. You know, you come at it different ways. You'll try it with a song, you'll try just practicing solo. But really, this the best thing you can do, Bauer, is develop a practice schedule, work on it every day for a certain amount of minutes. I mean, even if it's just 10 minutes, but develop that routine to where it's not a it's not a question whether I'm practicing today or not. It's just, that's a done deal. Maybe I might go longer one day or shorter. Um, you'll get it. I'm, I'm telling you, I've seen it over and over and over. And one day you'll wonder, why was that hard? My fingers just go there. Shulamit, she asked, could you give an example of a nice chord progression using exotic chords? I uh, said, so I'm, Tired of playing the standard basic chords. I need a little excitement, <laughs> something different. And uh, But I don't know, not only do I know the chords, but I don't know how they go together to make them sound good. Um, okay. So uh, needless to say, exotic is a, is a wide interpretation there. I'll pick some chords that I think are sort of different than normal chords. Let me think. Uh, I like this. Oh, let's go to my guitar, huh? You guys can see what I'm doing. That'll be a great help. Here we go. So I was deliberately trying to not to make too many chords because my experience, if I, if I throw a, you know, a half a dozen or eight different chords, it just get lost. Okay. So I picked three chords. I forgot what the name of this chord is. I know this is G major seven. I have this written down. By the way, there is a lesson on this in Real Guitar Success, and I'll put a link to that as well. So you don't have to just remember everything you saw here. Uh, not only lesson, but I'll have the written notation out for the chords and more. Then I move that whole form up to frets. See, it's the same. And then I went down to here. So it's really only one, two, three forms. Uh, up here is the same form moved up to frets. So that's one. Um, and it's using chords that I found I can use in a lot of different ways. So the, you get a lot of bang for your buck. It's not like one little lick you learn and you, you can, that's it. You can't really use it elsewhere. These are uh, fairly standard jazz or, or bossa nova too. Here's what I play. Uh, I threw in A minor seven there. Or you could strum it. Um, I'll use a pick. What the heck? Strum. Now, when you strum, by the way, you'll notice with my fingers, I can pick out which strings I, I pick with my right hand. When I strum, I'm strumming all the way down, but I'm not actually making all the strings sound. I'm slightly deading out this first string, and I'm slightly deading out this fifth string because they're not part of the chord. And I deaden them out by just slightly angling my fingers down so I just touch them. See, so what you're hearing is the same strings that I picked up with my right hand, but I'm strumming all six strings. That's a different form of the G major seven. I like this form. I originally learned it from a Gypsy King song. I really like it. So here's another easier exotic chord progression. By the way, this one's also, I think, in that same lesson or 
part of the chorus. G major seven, E minor seven, to a C add nine, and a D seven. This one's a little easier and a little more universal too. I use this C7 in all kinds. Of, I mean, this uh, seventh form, that's C, this D7. I use this in a lot of blues, but also in stuff like this. So again, it'd be. Okay, there's two examples. And again, I already have this written down and I'll put a link to that uh, along with a video, which you know goes over what I just did and maybe a little more detail than where to put the fingers. I forgot, it's been a while. Uh, I hope that helped shoot a bit. I hope if, if you didn't catch all those, everybody else at least inspires you to, uh, to know uh, some things that you could use to stretch. Mm, let's go on to the next question, Wally. I'm going to my first jam session. Great, Wally. It seems to be a laid back group that welcomes all skill levels. As far as when the guitar goes, I'm not sure what to expect. Will they help me with the key of the song? Do I, or do I need to figure that out? Do I just join in and strum quietly? What's your experience on these type of jam sessions? So my experience is phew, all the way from People can barely play. They don't know what to tell me because they can barely play all the way up to, you know, super professionals that just, you know, <laughs> sometimes they help me and sometimes they don't have time for it. There's really no one right way. Any, and the same with every, any group of people. First of all, Wally, I just want to say, really, I really admire that you're willing to stretch and go out there and just give it a shot. And it's one of those things that you're not going to know how you fit until you just try it and, you know, learn. There's no, nothing I could tell you about that group because I don't know them. Uh, if I had sat in, I could tell you a few things, but I don't know them. And I don't know if they're going to help you by telling you the key. I don't know if they know how to talk about the key of a song. Um, I hope they do, but you know, you, you might have to say, Hey, could you show me that chord progression again? I have often had to in, in playing, discern what key the song is just by watching one of the other players or or listening. That's a little more advanced, but um, it, it is, at least from my experience, when I'm playing professionals, they expect me to be able to figure out the key. But that's not always the case. I remember I was in a, a rock band where I would substitute for the uh, the player and they would call me in and the, the band leader would always say, we're in this key, watch out for this chord progression. He expected me to kind of know the basic chord progressions, but he would tell me where it's a little different from a standard progression. And that really helped me. That's just kind of what I need to know. Then I'd act like I'd been playing that song for years. And, you know, when I heard a little different, he, I knew that was the, the different chord he told me about. Um, the experience itself is fantastic. It can be um, unnerving. Yeah, because you're going to be feeling competent. That you have to feel incompetent to get to where you feel competent. And then, of course, as life would have it, once you feel competent in one group, you want to stretch and find something a little more difficult. Just go with it. And the best advice I can give you is try not to, ex whatever you experience is a learning experience and try not to take it too personal if, if you can't do something. My guess would be you'll probably have fun if they're a laid back group and they accept all skill levels. They're used to, you know, dealing with people of different skill levels. So, You'll learn something and uh, hopefully you'll be the person that will be helping somebody else know the key and uh, giving tips before too long. Go Wally. I wish there was a book or some lessons I could have took before I started playing with groups that would just tell me what to expect and what to do. I've never found it. And I got a feeling there isn't one really. Okay, final question pre-submitted. I'm 60 years old and starting to learn finger style almost two years ago. My question regards pain in my left hand from clamping down on chords too hard. Not a problem with single notes, but I can't seem to figure out how to fret the chord without putting too much strain on my thumb. It's either the thumb pain or buzzing. Yes. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, um, 
one thing to look at is accuracy raw this is raw uh when you're playing a chord my experience with beginners is they'll often try to take on too much in other words they'll try and learn three four five chords before they really got the first one or two down and it's not that i'm saying they have to get down perfect but they go for something they can measure hey, i know six chords as opposed to i can really play the chord right and that's kind of more nebulous I would back up and just work on a few chords and work on changing between a couple of chords and work on getting the fingers in the right place on the guitar. Now, you also, at the same time, take a look at your guitar and see if it needs some adjustment. Action, if it hasn't been professionally adjusted, that's worth considering. Maybe a little lighter strings. I am surprised I'm playing with what they call tens. That means the highest string is a point zero one zero we just call them tens um lighter i normal medium or normal uh, light gauge acoustic guitar strings are 12.012 i think but uh, i'm enjoying the lighter strings it's just easier on my hands that's worth a try you're gonna probably want to make sure your guitar is adjusted because they'll buzz like hell if uh if they're if the e action is not right that yeah, strings how high they are off the frets up and down the neck of the guitar um, and then back up and work on a few chords, not try to get a bunch of stuff all at once. If you're tensing your hand, that's a problem. If you're trying to get the chord by muscle, that's going to create hand problems. Try to get the chord more by correct position and then feel how hard you have to press, put your attention there to get the notes right. So you'd be surprised how just a little adjustments chord i just have to press hard by moving my hand a little this way coming up and down on the string a little bit better closer to the fret i barely have to put any pressure look at that clean sounding chord my guitar suggested uh that's not strenuous at all i'm using uh, a leverage right here um what i'm doing is my fingers are poking down on the strings and then guitar is here and my thumb is right behind it, so I got leverage. I'm not trying to do this. Oh, that would kill my hand. I've got this, you can just feel it when you do that. The amount of pressure you can put on the tips of your fingers with just a little bit of muscle. That's what I'm looking for. And for the guitar, oh, there we go, you can see it. For the guitar, I take that, that pressure, put it the guitar neck between my fingers, get the fingers close to the frets. Mm -hmm. Just, ah, just a little pressure. Not up here. That's going to kill my hand too over time. Thumb back here. See, I'm looking for that, that leverage right there. And I'm saying it intellectually, but really what worked is for me is I just kept doing it until it became a habit. I don't think about that anymore. This, oh, I have to press so much harder. See, I just... I don't know how much you can tell. It doesn't look like a lot of movement. I flatten my, my hand out a bit, knuckles, instead of up and down. I'm thinking up and then straight back down. Back from the frets. Same pressure, that's what I get. Now I have to press super hard. I can get it sound okay. Oh, that's that's going to hurt my hand. I'm not going to be able to play too long out up to the frets. Okay. And I know most people in the early stages of guitar, and I'm talking the first several years, Sometimes even first five years, depending on how often you practice and how much you've been working at it. Yeah, the length of time is not so much as, as how much you've actually been playing. Deal with that issue. It's it's something, that's why I don't mind spending a little time on it. I know everybody kind of needs reminders and to hear that and move your hand around and hear it again. Thanks for asking, Rod. Okay, I'm ready for some uh, questions for today. Let's see what we got. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Tim, George, Mark. Uh, let's see. Um, hi, Sheila. Mate, you made it. Great. Good to have you here. Regina, Happy New Year. Joe. Okay, I got a question. There it is. In the box of picking pattern. Okay, how appropriate. What do you do with a D chord? Oh, good question. Um, I showed chords that use the bass note in the... Oh, let's go to the guitar again. That's one thing good about having this 
computer screen here. I can see if you can't see my guitar. I can see what you see. Um, and I showed the G chord. We use the sixth string for the bass note. The C and the F you use the fifth string. For the D, you're going to use the fourth string. So the pattern would be you move your whole hand to four, one, three, two. Okay. Same, same pattern, just moved over to the top four strings. Four, one, three, two. Okay, next. Oh, let's go back to my, my face. Um, is it possible to lighten how to lighten how you fret notes over the years? Oh, Felicia. Oh, good question. Almost sounds like a, a, um, a stage question because that's the one thing I didn't say. I told you just a little while ago how to position your hands and little, you know, subtle little tips. Uh, no big changes, but subtle little tips that will get your hand. By the way, the one thing I didn't message, uh, I didn't mention, oh, let me go back to my guitar, is when you're fingering chords, try to let your elbow not stick out like that. That's almost as a always a sign that your hand's not in the right position. Let it hang down and try to relax it. It shouldn't be stiff holding up your guitar. It should be like you just release your pressure a little bit and your hand falls. Most students, I know I had to do this. I have to keep telling myself, relax. I keep wanting to tense up and start pressing harder. So now Felicia's asked over the years, if you can lighten up the pressure and I wouldn't say not even over the years, at the same time you're doing all this, Keep working for the least amount of pressure that you need and make the chord sound right. Now, don't focus all your attention there. Get the positioning right. And, but over time, what you're looking for is how hard you need to press the string to get the sound. And I have students, usually have been playing for a little bit, actually practice things like this. Play the node and then release it until it deadens out and then press and see how much pressure you actually need. Spend a little time on that each day. See, I'm not getting, I'm pressing harder, but I'm not getting any better sound, but I am getting more tired. So that's a practice. And I'll have, I'll have students do exercise like this, play, and then lighten up. Got it? Now, I, I basically uh, am playing the same note with less pressure than I started off with. Now I'll do the next note. Lighten up. There we go. Now I'll press back down. Okay, again, I started off too hard. I'm, I'm working on that habit of pressing just hard enough. And it's something that you, it's a habit. You get the habit of pressing harder than you need to. And you kind of want to develop the habit of pressing just hard enough. And it's a, a something you work at over time. You can just remind yourself over time. I think that helps too as you're playing. See if you can lighten up. And it's a little awkward when you're trying to learn something new. That's why I, I kind of isolate that as a separate practice. Because when you learn something new, you're trying to get fingers in the right place, get your hand in, in the right angles and all those kinds of things. It's too much all at once. Good question, Felicia. And I didn't uh, tell her to ask that. Uh, forever thoughtful. I had problem with finger pain in fretting hand by pressing hard. Huh? Okay. Took it for, took it for new strings and tech said action was much too high. Uh, afterwards, it's awesome. And I progressed much quicker. She's saying, in short, she took her guitar to a technician, had it adjusted, and it's much easier to play, and she's progressing faster. And a lot of what she thought was maybe her was the guitar strings were too high off the fretboard. Yes, that's why I say, at least have your guitar looked at if you've never done that. And I've had brand new guitars that really needed an action adjustment. They just don't, even if they did, the factory had changed in shipping. So it's not just that if you have an old guitar or a new guitar. But I would have a professional at least look at it. And it probably, I'd say 90% of guitars could benefit from at least a minimum action adjustment. And probably in half of those could use a little more intense action adjustment. It's worth it. I know it's a bite up front, but it's worth it. It just makes the whole thing much more fun. Oh, thank you, Forever Thoughtful. I appreciate that. Okay, that's all the questions I have for today. Uh, I'm doing a quick look over, see if I see question anywhere. Uh, no, I think I got it. Okay. I'm going to do the drawing for today and then we're going to end while I'm doing the drawing. If you think of another question, feel free to add it. Um, I'll take one last look at the end here to see if I missed any other questions. So 
here we go. And again, for those of you who came in afterwards, um, this is a drawing for those who are in my Real Guitar Success uh, membership. They've completed the 20 sessions for the month. Just means they spent at least 10 minutes. You can always spend more. I have a way you can save it in your favorites and all. But as you just go through each of the 20 sessions, one a day, spend 10 minutes. And I introduce a variety of strumming, chords, finger picking, theory, uh, different aspects of playing guitar. And, and each day you're adding to your knowledge and your experience. And you can decide if you want to spend more time on those in the individual technique. Then at the end, they get entered in the drawing for a $50 Amazon gift card. And that's what I'm looking for here. Let's see who gets the card this month. Hmm. John. John. And you know what? I think I've never picked John before. <laughs> Congratulations, John. Um, I don't have a last name, but I do have an email and I will get you that Amazon gift card. Uh, by the end of the day, actually. Thank you all for playing along. I appreciate everyone who's um, been in my Real Guitar Success. And those of you who have completed the 20 sessions, of course, the real winner is all of you because you've just that much more playing guitar. And I think it's worth more than a $5 gift card, but it's nice to have the gift card too. In any case, that's it for today. I don't have any more questions to answer. You're very welcome, Tim. Thank you all for joining me. And if you're watching this pre-recorded, feel free to add your questions in the comments on uh, YouTube. I will uh, answer your questions the best I can. And I will be back the first Thursday of next month and um, 12 noon California time. I don't know what it is in your time, but um, everybody on my email list, I'll make sure and give you a heads up that it's coming and and uh, a place where you can look at the time zones if uh, if you need some changes. Thanks again. I'll see you again, hopefully the first Thursday next month. Bye.